Hey guys, it's May May, and look at this adorable wooden ornament that we are going to make today. Now, I know you're going to be wondering about these little blocks right here. We have these in store, and they're actually in our bargain bin, so they're on clearance. So you'll want to grab yourself some of these. They come in a three-pack, and look at this guy. I know, so much to show you, so let's get started. Okay, so I'm going to take one of those blocks from the three-pack. I love this one. Um, they, they all come different, by the way. This is actual natural wood, so they come in different shapes and sizes when you get them. So I'm going to use this one for today. And this stamp set... This is our new stamp set that's done for Edith's kit that she does every month at Scrapbooking With Me. And this one's called Jolly Old Elf. Now, this is available to you. You don't have to be in Edith's Club to get this. We also carry this in our store. But you can join Edith's Club if you'd like. But this one is available for you to pick up. And that elf, are you kidding me? Santa, he's adorable. Okay, check this out. So I started thinking, I want this to look like wood burning. So I'm going to show you some steps along the way that you can stop at any point, okay? Because if you want this to look like wood burning, watch this. This color is pine cone from Versaclair. It is a dark brown, and I love this color. And when you stamp this Santa on this wood in this dark brown, it totally looks like wood burning, okay? So here's my little Santa. Put him like that. He looks even cuter on this smaller block. The other one was a little bigger. Make sure you get him down there good. Take your time. Let that ink transfer. And remember, this is a pigment ink that I'm using. So it's not going to sink in. It's going to sit on the top. Does that totally look like wood burning with that brown? I know. It's so cool. The next thing I'm going to do... And this is really cool because I'm using my Versa Clairs. And if you're familiar with the Versafine Clairs they will hold out for embossing a long time, okay? So I'm gonna use the color Tulip Red for the word Jolly Old Elf, and I'm gonna put it right here on this corner. And because I'm using my clairs, like I said, and because I'm using pigment ink, I can come back and emboss this in clear embossing, and that is what is gonna lock it onto the block. Now, I don't know that you have to do this. I just feel more comfortable doing it. Now, I'm just going to use a piece of notebook paper here, fold it in half so I can get my embossing powder out really well, and open that, do that. Okay, I'm going to use my clear embossing powder. I'm going to be using both of my embossing powders today, clear and white, so you need to make sure you don't sit these next to each other so you can remember who is what, okay? So, this one is the clear, and I'm just going to sprinkle this on. Now, you notice I did not powder tool this first. I'm not too worried about that with the clear. If the clear sticks somewhere else, it's not gonna hurt my feelings. The big thing is I want it to stick to my stamping. So I'm just gonna kind of focus on the stamped area and then tap this off. Now, I wanna show you something that I don't love. Because this is natural wood, do you see all those little pieces that are getting into my embossing powder that needs to go back in here? You need to be mindful of that. What you can do, let me see if I have one handy. You can take just a paintbrush. I don't have one close, but you can take a paintbrush and just brush those little pieces out um, like this. Or after you tump it like this, you can move over to the side and then get those little pieces off your page before you go back to your jar. Just be mindful of that. So now that guy is coated, all right, and I'm going to sit this off to the side. I may not even tump this back in there. I may save it and use it on other ornaments over and over again and then see if I have any left I need to salvage. That way I don't care about the little dots that are in it because I'll use it on my wood only. Just be mindful of that. It's not the end of the world. If those little dots get in there, it would bother you later, but you, you know, think of it now. Make sure you pay attention to it now. Okay, heat tool. I'm just gonna use my regular heat tool to heat this, but I'm still gonna preheat it as always. So let it preheat for about 30 seconds. Okay, time to heat. I'm gonna hold this where you guys can maybe see it change. See that? It's so cool. And this, like I said, is just locking this in. I shouldn't be talking over it, but isn't that neat? Okay, so remember how I told you you could stop at any point? 
this is gorgeous. You could stop right here and let this be your ornament, right? The other cool thing you can do with this stamp set, let me show you really quick. We gave you the beard hair here in the corner. So if you wanted to, you could stamp his little beard hair in there and then heat emboss that as well. But I'm gonna do a different treatment, so I'm not gonna waste the ink. I don't need it, so I'm just gonna keep going. Now you could stop here, all right? Anything you wanna do, I want to color with color pencils because I don't want to use my markers on the wood. I decided that using my markers on the wood used too much of my ink from my markers because it soaked in. And I had a hard time controlling it because of the grain of the wood. The markers would kind of run, but I don't have that issue with my color pencils. I even, I'm going to color this guy in, okay? Um, and then after I do all the color, I hit it with my heat tool again because, you know, these color pencils are wax. So I hit it with my heat tool one more time. And then if I need to smooth out the color in any way, it seems to be easier to do it while it's kind of warm. I don't know if that's necessary. I'm going to color it and let you see it before I heat it and let you make a decision on whether it needs to be done twice or not. Probably doesn't, but that's just what I did when I made my first one. So I'm just going to color this guy and we will get right back together. So that's him colored one time. And then, like I said, I took my heat tool, heated it up and kind of melted the wax a little bit. So I'll let you see that happen. Again, I don't know how necessary this step is, but like on his boot, I can kind of get in there now and get it a little darker if I want to, but I kind of like the wood grain showing through here and there. So if you don't care for the wood grain, you might consider heating it up like I just did. See how that's really sinking in? Um, and then you can do this and get an even darker color. But I like some of that wood grain showing through to kind of show that it is on wood. Okay. Oops. There we go. All right. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the white portion of him, which is going to be so pretty. Now on this guy, you can see that his beard is shiny. His beard and his, um, all of his snowy area is a little shiny. I don't know why that's not showing up on camera. Get a little, there's a little shimmer there in the beard. That is embossing powder. And you can do that by using your embossing pens and coloring that with the white one and then embossing that with your ink, with your embossing powder. I'm gonna do this one a little different because I know some of you are gonna wanna know if this works. So we're gonna try it and see. I may be sad when I'm done, but let's see. Let's try right here in the little puff of his hat first. This is a snow marker. Have you seen these? These little snow markers, you can heat them up and they puff. Um, and I thought what I would do is give this one a go. And let's try it right here just in this little puff first and see how that works. So you take your heat tool on this and you heat it. Now, I'm going to bring this up really close to you guys. The trick with this one is to not overheat it. Can you see how that puffed? 
Let me go to the side. You can see that dimension. You'll see more as I do more. I really like how that turned out, but you gotta be careful not to overheat that. If you overheat this, it will go yellow on you and you don't want that to happen. And the heavier you put this on, the more puff you get. So be mindful of that too. I'm not gonna try to get super, super puffy, but I do want it to kind of be fluffy. Okay, I'm also going to heat this in sections so that it doesn't dry out on me. And I'm too scared to go too far with it. I don't want it to go yellow. I think I could hit a little bit more right there, but I'm a little scared too. Okay, so now I'm gonna do this section. It's looking really cute though. So there it is with all the puff and all the texture. I don't know how well that white will show up. There's a little bit of the puff. Can you see it there? Kind of goes puffy and textury. I think it's really cool and it looks very vintage to me. So now I wanna show you how I did this portion around the edge. I thought this looked cool to kind of darken it up, kind of distress it a little bit. On the back, I didn't do that because I wanted to show you do two different ways. This is just a stamp and emboss with the um, clear embossing, but I wanted to show you how I did this. I think it looks cool. Okay, so I took one of these guys. This is my little Nouveau blending sponge, and I just used um, Vintage Photo. So here's some Vintage Photo ink. I'm just gonna tap that in. And what I did was from the edge, I tapped it on like this, and I went a little too heavy on my first one. I didn't like how heavy I did on that one. What I'm trying to do is darken that wood edge, because I think that's pretty to look a little more distressed, a little less crisp and clean. This one's looking a lot better to me. I don't like the way my first one turned out. But you know what, that's how we learn, right? We do our first ones and then we keep going. So a little lighter hand with this is better, if you ask me. See how pretty that looks, how worn and distressed? Let me show you the difference on the other side. See, I'm gonna do this side too. Um, that way I'll know I'll have it done and I won't have to do this process twice. I'm even doing some around the edges because I feel like the edge is a little pale. Um, I'm prob it's probably overkill. You don't have to do this, but I think this looks pretty to kind of bring, kind of darken that wood a little bit. Look how pretty this little guy looks. Loving it so far. Okay, let's do our snowflakes around the edge. Now for the snowflakes, I used my powder tool. My powder tool has a little hole in it. Let's do it this way. So I'm putting powder all over this little guy, just like so, because I don't want this to stick everywhere. So I'm being real careful with that. And I'm gonna blow it off just a little bit. Be careful if you're blowing it off because if you do get any moisture on there, everything's gonna stick. Now I took some snowflakes from a different stamp set. I'll show which one it is because you probably have it in your stash. This is my stamp set called Snow Peaking, which I also think would be super cute on here, right? But I took the snowflakes from there. You can see I already used these once. And I'm using my alabaster white ink, my pigment ink from Brutus Monroe. And it works really well. What I'm doing is I am dipping these guys into the, or tapping them onto the ink. I just laid these out on my block kind of willy nilly. Like you can see they're kind of a little here and there. And then I just came in and tapped these down wherever they would fit and press pretty good because it's wood. Ah, see how pretty those are? Love those. Okay, let's go on around the page, or the page, around the block. That's even funnier, around the block, okay. So then I'm gonna come up here to the top and whatever fits gets stamped. And then I'm gonna come this way. I'm gonna ink it up again, even though I didn't use all the ink off of those, I'm just a little leery to try to not do it just every time. So I'm gonna do this one here and I'm just laying it where it fits. We're just kind of making a frame. And this one, I didn't use the ink off of. I'm gonna use that ink right there to kind of fill in that hole. Look how pretty that is. And now we need to around the bottom. Something like that. Oh, beautiful. Okay, so this is where I used my white, um, my white embossing powder. You don't have to, you could clear emboss those, but I think the white is gonna, it does a really good job on those snowflakes. So here we go, let's white emboss those. Now we just emboss it. Now I'm just gonna knock all that powder off and any place that any of your white embossing powder sticks is actually just cute. It looks like um, it looks like snow. Do you see it there? It's very little, but it looks like snow. Isn't that cute? Okay, so on the back of my first one, like I said, I just did a stamp and I clear embossed it to look like um, 
wood burning. To me, that looks like wood burning. Now, I'm not gonna stamp on the back of this one. I'm just gonna go ahead and put this one together and show you how to put the little hook I did on. Now, you certainly could drill a hole and just put a little string in there, but I'm gonna show you how I did it. And I'm gonna do this one in gold. Since I did my other one in silver, I'm gonna do this one in gold. And I'm just gonna take a piece of my ribbon and I'm just gonna decide how big I want my hook to be for my tree. I'm making this pretty big because I wanna be able to twist this in the tree because of the way it goes around. So I'm giving myself a pretty good loop there. So I'm just gonna trim this. I love this gold mesh wired ribbon, it is so good. All right, so then with my hot glue gun, here's exactly what I did. So I found the top here. One thing that's real important if you do stamp the back is make sure when you flip it over, because this wood is not perfectly circular, make sure you kind of put your fingers like this and flip it, or make sure you know which side that you're on. I will show you this. Some of these guys are pretty big. I used a small pack we had, so some of them you may order from us are gonna be pretty big, so pay attention to that. You won't be able to put your hand all the way around some of these, so. And see how they come in different sizes in the pack? So I chose a small pack that we had because I wanted to show y'all on camera. All right, so here's what you do at the top. Add a little bit of hot glue. Don't need a whole lot. Just a little dot. And then take your ribbon and put that in there on the front. Don't push your fingers in there because that is mesh. But I'll show you this. Your pokey tool is metal and you can just stick your little pokey tool down there and get that to go in because that glue will sink into the mesh and that's really all you need. So we got that stuck down. Once it cools a little bit, then you can start to kind of smash on it. Perfect. Okay, now I'm gonna turn it over and do the other side. Wouldn't this be a cute gift for somebody? You could write a little note on the back or put a little sentiment back here for someone. That'd be super cute. While that's cooling, let's make our little bows. These are super easy to do. So I'm gonna take my ribbon. I'm gonna start with a loop like this. I'm gonna show you what I did. This worked out really well for me. I took the loop and then this piece I brought underneath to make my loop, cause see how big my loop gets then? I can see it super easy. And then just stick this one through. Now it'll twist when you go to tie it. That's okay, don't pull it tight, we gotta adjust it. I don't want a big old bow. I want a pretty small bow. I mean, you can make any size you want, but I want mine pretty small just to live there at the top. So now I can tighten this a little more. So that bow looks good. See how beautiful this mesh does? It's so hard to mess up a bow in this mesh. So hard to mess it up. All right, and then I'm gonna trim these guys away. And I like to, because I don't want this to hang down on my ornament, I want this, to bow, this bow to go out. I like to take this and trim it straight up to the edge of the bow. I can always trim it again when I put it on my ornament, but I just kind of do it just like this and I get that little point. I don't try to dovetail this mesh. There's no sense in that. It's not gonna do it for you. All right, so there's one, let me do another. Now that this guy's cool, I'm gonna take some hot glue and put it right here on top of my ribbon. You guys will remember, I made some ornaments like this last year with heat transfer vinyl, and I loved how this looked with the little bow at the top. I just think it dresses this up so much. It adds something to the wood. So there's that little bow. I'm gonna flip it over and put one on this side as well. I just love how that looks. And if you stamp both sides, you don't really care which side shows on the tree. But isn't that adorable? This guy's so cute. Let's bring the other one over with the silver ribbon. And also done a little different. Remember, I heat embossed that with the white embossing powder where I did the little puffiness there. I can see that the camera is really blowing it out because the white on camera just gets really bright. But these guys turn out super, super cute. Cute little gift ideas. Wouldn't that be cute hanging on a package and then you could give, they could be an ornament they get to keep from year to year. Love it. So there you go, guys. Two little ornaments using your stamps. Imagine how many stamps you have in your stash you can make into ornaments. You're going to go crazy doing this, and I want to see them. So when you make one of these, head to our customer gallery at maymaymadeit.com and share with me what you're making. I love to see it. I cannot wait to see what you guys do with any of these techniques I showed today. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Talk to you again next time. Bye-bye.